Hello, I think we're live. Just check the technology, looking good. I see there's 15 of you on already. A few of you are waiting. <laughs> I'm a little bit early. Good evening, everybody. Hello, the Furman. Hello, Ian. Hope you're all well. Hope the lighting and everything is looking okay. I think it's looking all right. So I'm just gonna wait a few moments, get in and let everyone get the notification and all that and log on and join us so let me just make some room in this place in this very large office of mine so today I want to talk about um, making money with WordPress I thought that'd be a good topic of conversation I've had a few questions about it recently so that's why I've been inspired on that one but of course I will be answering any of your questions you've got them and we can cover anything you like to do with WordPress, internet marketing, making money, affiliate marketing, Facebook, whatever you like. Hello Scott. Scott says thanks for answering my email. That's fine if you want to send me an email you'll find the email address uh, up there I think. <laughs> uh, yeah, email me at eagle at wpeagle.com I'll do my best to reply to as many as I possibly can. But of course, I do get quite a lot, so I do miss a couple sometimes, and I do apologise. But you know, email me again if you haven't heard from me in a few days. Then uh, yeah, email me again. That's fine. Does the sound? Is the sound low? Let's see if I can turn it up a little bit. Hello. That's set right. I can turn it up a bit. Hang on. Is that better or am I too loud now? Just test, testing one, check one. <laughs> I'll turn it up a bit, hopefully. You might have to turn the speakers up at your end a little bit. So, hello, make your webs. I think I'm loud enough now. Um, hello, make your where own website. Question there is if I replace my website from one webmaster tool to another webmaster tools, is it okay for SEO? Yeah, that should be fine. I'm a bit loud now. Uh, I'm going to put it down just a touch and, and back off the mic a little bit. Is that better? Hello, Ramould. I hope I got your name right. I'm glad you're happy to be here. I'm I'm glad you're here too. Now. I am talking a little bit quieter than all because the kids, they're not asleep yet. Well, the little one isn't anyway. So my wife's trying to uh, get them to sleep, so I don't want to be too loud, but um, <laughs> you might have to turn your speakers up at your end. Hi, Sean Lane, good to have you on. Hello, Jason. Hello, Brian. I hope you're still uh, enjoying the T-shirt, which, by the way, they are available to buy. Link down there, wpeagle.com slash shop. And yeah, available in a range of colors and sizes. Ian's got a question straight away, but it's really confusing, but he's gonna try. So um, go for it, I see. Let's see what we can do with that. Hello, Stephanie. I'm sure your t-shirt is going to be with you soon. They do take a little while because they're printed here in the UK and then they're shipped over to the States. But it will get there soon. I'm sure you can't wait. <laughs> I 
good team. Scott says, roughly how much traffic are your sites getting? Um, let's have a look. Obviously it varies depending on the site and how much work I've done on them, <laughs> which as a lot of you know is not much. They're still working on Bowwell Tech, so I'm hoping to have some updates on that soon. So I'm just going to have a look at, I don't know, let's say, what should we go for, July? I always think August is a bit of a funny month to uh, to gauge anything by because of holidays and, and all that stuff. So um, beer shirts gets around um, 650 odd sessions a month, which is like 500 odd users. That's beer shirts. Um, Bow Wow Tech, which is the new one, is all do already doing better. That's had 900. Um, Odd. Hang on. Yeah, in a month. Obviously, that's. I think I only started back in August, so can't go back that far. But yeah, that's way up to nine hundred. Not checked my commission on that one recently. Let's have a look. It's early days on the uh, commission, but it's had four ordered items which is not too bad. Um, nothing particularly expensive though, like a, a dog life jacket. But it's early days, we'll see what happens. Okay, let's go through some of the questions. Bear me a second.
Sorry about that. <laughs> you know, babies and all that stuff. Uh, I think I left the mic on as well, didn't I? So you could hear baby crying and the stress between myself and my wife. Hey, there we go. So anyway, what did I miss? It's good to have 39 people on tonight. That's that's a record, I think, for a little while. It's been quiet the last couple of weeks. Sorry about that. So, um, I've lost my thread completely now. Hello, Phil. Good to have you on. Long-time subscriber. First time watching. Hello, Michael Thacker. Uh, Stephanie, as I said, yeah, your T-shirt will be with you soon. Hi, Helen. Good to see you. Abdul says, do you have any other job other than affiliate sites? Um, only YouTube, really. <laughs> That's my main job and then the affiliate stuff as well. Ian says, do taxonomies separate subcategories? I did a lot of products on the same day and my site origin carousels can't separate them by time, only the date. Um, so the carousel shows two subcategories. Uh, instead of one, how can I separate those carousels so they only show one subcategory instead of two? Um, I think on a carousel you can set the category, can't you, that it pulls stuff from? I know that's quite a complicated question, Ian. Um, if you want to quickly email me a link or something so that I can look at it and visualize it, then I might be able to help a little bit better. Hello, Aircraft Knowledge. Hi, I'm your old subscriber and the first time watching you live. That's great. A lot of first timers tonight. Good to see you. Hi, Lance. Michael Thacker again asks, are you making full-time business from your affiliate sites? Yes, the, the majority of my affiliate earnings does come through YouTube. The, the other sites are doing quite nicely as well. Um, and I'm looking to build them up a bit more. I think I mentioned that I'm going to be getting an assistant to help me do lots of stuff. Sean says, I have a question. I am a graphic designer by trade and can build W websites, but I still don't know how to make money online. I've never made a penny of passive income. What's the best way to start? Okay, Sean, um, the best way to start. Well, if you're a graphic designer, you've got a couple of options, really. Um, the first is you could sell your graphics as kind of stock graphics or as templates. So um, head over to somewhere like Graphic River and you'll get an idea on there. So people that are looking for say a logo or some other graphic thing, um, people go to Graphic River and they buy it and then they just kind of tweak it in Photoshop and make it their own. I've done it before in a number of my videos uh, when I wanted a logo. So you'd get passive income that way you could create a couple of logos and then you could obviously sell them many times. That's one way. Another way to make passive income is to um, have a blog and do affiliate marketing that way. So you could have a blog in a niche uh, or niche if you're in America, create content, help people buy products, answer people's questions, add affiliate links to the content uh, and make some money that way. You could take that one step further and go for a WooZone style site where you actually add products as well as having um, blog content as well. And that kind of brings me on to the topic of tonight's stream, which is how to make money with WordPress. And what I wanted to really talk about is um, basically selling WordPress services. It's not really noisy down here. Excuse me, let me move this hoodie. It's making noise. That's better. So yeah, I wanted to talk about making money with WordPress. And as I say, I'm talking about selling services. So this is something that I've done uh, before it's not something I do so much now because I've got you know other stuff with YouTube and affiliate but if you need to get some cash in and build up a little business and also if you want to improve your WordPress skills it's a great thing to do um, so there's a number of steps to it uh, I'm probably going to simplify it far too much um, I'm just going to tell you what I did and how I do it so a good few years ago um, I found WordPress, I was introduced to it by another web designer who was building a website for the company I had at the time. And yeah, WordPress just kind of blew me away. I was really interested in it. I saw the power of it that you could um, just make a website really easily. And it kind of came off the back of buying another website off a more traditional uh, web design company where they kind of made bespoke websites. 
and I'd paid them a lot of money and they delivered a website that wasn't particularly good. In fact, I don't think they even actually delivered a website. It got to a point where I just gave up um, because they just weren't creating what I wanted to. And then I saw WordPress and it kind of blew my mind and I could see that that was the way forward. So I began teaching myself WordPress and all of my WordPress skills I've learned by simply using WordPress, by setting up websites, and by watching tutorials and reading stuff online. I've never been on a training course or been taught by anyone or anything like that. So um, fast forward a bit uh, in time and I'd then been bought out of the company that I had at the time and I was looking for things to do. So um, I started building websites for people, WordPress websites and the way I approached it um, was I was very open with how I was going to build the website. So if I was meeting someone, I'd say, you know, I'm going to be building the website with WordPress, um, which is a free piece of software. I'm going to be using a premium theme, which I would. I'd go and get a theme off Theme Forest, or I'd use, you know, some good theme like XTheme or something like that. And yeah, I'll just be very clear that I'm going to be using uh, plugins and themes that are already out there, and I'm going to plug them all together for you, and I'm going to make it work, and it's going to be really good, and obviously you can give me your input and we'll make a website that you're gonna love. Um, which was obviously a little bit different to what people were used to because people were used to um, sorry, just looking at the chat. Yeah, people were used to um, kind of have a graphic designer draw up the website in terms of how it's gonna look um, in Photoshop and then you'd have a few like back and forths with the client and then if the client was happy then it would go to a developer and they would then build it and, and make it real. So this was different, I was gonna be using premium themes, I was gonna be using WordPress and what I'd do is I'd get the theme set up and I'd get it looking reasonably good and then I'd show the client and then they'd give me feedback and then I'd, I'd kind of adjust it on the fly. Uh, there'd be no Photoshop designs or anything like that. So um, I think what I'm trying to get to is that anyone can really do this if you've got some WordPress skills and you know they don't have to be particularly amazing WordPress skills you need to be able to install WordPress you know set up some hosting domain name um, you know get a theme maybe get some plugins you can do this now of course you are going to need clients you're going to need clients and that is that's part of the trick so my tips on on that part in terms of getting clients is the first thing you can do is you can go out networking which I know is not for everyone and a lot of people don't want to do that however I found it's one of the best ways to get clients and yeah it can be uncomfortable at first because you've got to go out to these meetings you've got to meet people you've got to talk you've got to you know do all that stuff which is not for everyone but if you can kind of push yourself out of your comfort zone and do that it will pay dividends it does take a little bit of time um, you can't approach networking as a quick um, solution to get clients you have to go out and you have to build some relationships with people um, don't expect to you know, just walk into a room at a business meeting and, and sell a website it's just not going to work the other thing you can do um, to start is you can offer to build some websites um, for friends family other associates you may have and offer to do it either really cheap or maybe even free um, just to kind of get some websites out there build up a portfolio and get your name out there as a WordPress developer um, and then obviously once you've got a few under under your belt, you'll find that you get other work coming in. Um, I've always found in business that if you do a good job, if you're honest with people and you know you have integrity and, and all the other stuff that people want in business and they like you, I mean, that's the key thing, they need to like you. So um, yeah, try not to stitch anyone up and be nice. Um, then they will talk about you and you know when you do a great website for someone other people see it and people ask them you know, Where did you get your website from your name will come up and you'll get more work A few little bonuses with uh, setting up this sort of business. I'm gonna go through the positive side and the negative side um, the positive side is um, You get to do something you enjoy <laughs> Hopefully, I mean it's quite good fun setting up WordPress and um, you're gonna get paid for it. And when it comes to pricing, um, you can really charge whatever you think you're worth. So obviously when you start off, you're gonna be charging not, not a huge amount, you, it's just the way it is. So to put it into context, when I first started doing websites, I think I charged you know 500 pounds, something like that, which in dollars is like $750 maybe. I know people do it cheaper than that, but I, I think that's a pretty good starting point. The last website that I did um, was about 10,000 pounds. So once you get to a point where you've done a lot of websites and you've 
you know got a lot of experience you can obviously charge more other things that you can charge for which again gives you kind of a passive income in a way are hosting and um, support and maintenance which is essential when it comes to WordPress websites so hosting what I did for that is I had a reseller account with TSO host which I don't recommend anymore because they're not as good as they used to be but they did used to be quite good but there's loads of hosting companies that do reseller accounts and when if you have a reseller account basically you can then create your own kind of hosting accounts that you can then sell at whatever price you want to and uh, nowadays I use WP engine I've just got one of their big accounts and I just use that and, and charge my clients um, an annual fee another tip when it comes to hosting I don't tend to get involved with email email is a nightmare um, so if a client says oh can you do my email just go no I can't I do I do website hosting I don't do email hosting if you want email go and check out Microsoft um, Office 365 or, or some other email provider because email goes wrong quite a bit and it's very important to people their email so you get a lot of stressed people ringing you up if their emails down and it's your fault so yeah don't offer email hosting but do offer WordPress hosting um, and then yeah with support again you can charge an annual fee depending on the client you know ballpark figure could be something like a hundred a month um, or a thousand a year something like that and then for that fee what I offer is just support you know if there's a problem with the website I'll fix it if they want little changes I'll do them um, I'll keep the site up to date with WordPress updates that kind of thing um, but generally there's not a lot to do I mean of course the client will always ring you at the wrong time you know when you're on holiday or whatever and say oh the website's broken or whatever but that's just one of those things but most of the time they will pay you every year or every month and you won't have to do too much you're just there for them so um, yeah now let's go through some of the negative um, stuff um, with selling WordPress um, or selling WordPress services um, the first thing is you will get clients that ring you and get stressed and um, they will do it when you're on holiday or some other you know inconvenient time that's just one of those things you got to deal with that you do obviously have to have a little bit of customer service um, skills um, which is fine um, you got to be careful with what you're doing um, now I've made mistakes we all have made mistakes um, and nothing you know particularly bad has happened I'm still here <laughs> but just I'll give you a couple of examples of those mistakes um, one mistake I made back in the day was to think that WordPress could just do absolutely everything and it was the best thing ever and nothing else could come near it so you know someone come up and say hey I've got a, a website I've, I need an e-commerce site and it's got like 20,000 products and we we get 100,000 visits a day and I go oh yeah great and then we'll just use WooCommerce or whatever and um, that might not be the best solution for that and you know those kind of sites they've got a lot of traffic they've got a lot of money going through them so if they go wrong the company doesn't make any money and therefore you know you can get sued so you've got to be careful when you're dealing with those kind of clients I mean the small businesses that just want a blog or a, a static site they're fine but big e-commerce stuff you're gonna to want to be careful uh, and also on that note when it comes to saying that WordPress is wonderful you just want to be careful with what you promise so I did another site for a company and they wanted lots and lots of different features they wanted like event booking um, with a seat plan so people could like click on their seat and, and choose it they wanted um, timetables for all the events and activities that this company was offering um, um, they just wanted tons of stuff and basically me and my naivety said yeah that's fine that's fine I'll get some plugins I'll get an event plugin I'll get a, a timetable plugin I'll get whatever and um, which I did um, but I ended up installing like 40 plugins on the site and they didn't all play nice with each other and the website ran really slow and yeah, it was a nightmare it was a nightmare um, so yeah there's a few things you just got to be aware of but generally it's positive it's, it's fun and it's a great way of, of building up a little business and earning some money which then you can obviously use that time and money to, to develop other things So, um, yeah, any questions on that? So the firm says, did you get indemnity insurance cover in case a client tried to sue you? Yes, I did back then have professional indemnity insurance. I don't think I have it anymore. Um, but I do have good terms and conditions that says that, you know, nothing is my fault if I mess up. Although I don't know how legal that is. Professional indemnity insurance is probably something you might want to consider. 
but I've never, no client has, has actually sued me and I haven't messed up anything too badly, but you do have to be aware. Another classic mistake I've made, and I've done this a couple of times, um, is, you know, in WordPress, in the uh, in the settings, in the reading bit, there's a, a little tick box that allows you to um, discourage search engines from coming into the site, which is great. You should tick that box when you're developing a site. But when you set the site live, you've got to remember to untick that box. And there's a couple of times where I've set a site live and I've forgotten to untick that box. And yeah, the search engines can't crawl the site and they lose a load of search rankings and lose traffic. And yeah, that can be a difficult conversation with the client. So there's a few things you need to do, but you know, if you have good systems in place and you're just, you know, a little bit more organized than maybe I am, uh, then you'll be fine. Other things to be aware of when it comes to like launching client sites is the freer one redirects and if you know they have got good search engine traffic you just got to be so careful that you don't mess that up but you know when you start out they're not the kind of clients you're going to have you're going to have clients that have very small sites and don't have a lot of traffic so it doesn't matter so much <laughs> um helen says pi is rather expensive it is rather expensive so you know i've not had it for quite some time and i've been fine and even when i did have it i've never had to make a claim so whether you need it or not i don't know depends how uh how close to the wind you like to sail, I guess. Okay, let me go through some of the questions. If you've got any questions on that, make them anywhere. I think I've covered most things, but let me just clarify. The coolest thing about it is the ongoing revenue that you can get from hosting and from uh, maintenance. So, you know, I've just had a few clients renew with me now. I mean, I don't, I'm not taking on any new clients. I haven't built any websites for a little while apart from the one I just launched. Um, but I've still got clients where I created websites, you know, three, four, five years ago, and they still pay me uh, every year to support the site, which is a nice thing. You know, you, I've got them all in my diary and just pops up, you know, invoice such and such person for support, drop them an email say support is up for renewal it's another thousand pounds for the year and they go yeah no problem and off you go so that's the, that's one of the best things about it and you get to learn some really cool stuff and that's kind of how um wp eagle came about as a youtube channel because i was doing lots of wordpress stuff for clients and i was coming across lots of cool themes and lots of cool plugins because different clients would ask for different things and i just thought hey this could make a cool youtube channel and that's that's why i'm here <laughs> So yeah, there's loads of benefits to it. Um, of course, you might not want to go out and get clients networking or whatever, you might want to just do it all online, in which case you can pitch services on uh, people per hour um, or any of those kind of places and uh, and get clients that way. But, you know, as I say, I like to do clients, work with clients that are generally local and um, ones that I can see face to face, but you know, I've done clients, I've done work for clients in other countries, that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, I would always recommend networking as a really good way to you know build up a good reputation and, and get loads of clients. Uh, Abdul says, I feel your pain. I have two young kids. For myself, it's hard to work from home while looking after them. Yeah. It is. Um, I'll turn that light down. It's a bit bright in my eyes. It really is work. Working from home has its advantages. Of course, it has its advantages. You can work whenever time you like, and you don't have to, you know, commute or anything like that. But when you have got young children, it is hard because you know I want to spend time with my kids. And in the business that I do, you know, we're trying to do videos, whatever. If kids are crying or screaming or running about, whatever, you can't do it. You can't do it. So I have considered, you know. Um, getting an office or just renting a virtual space, whatever. But again, I don't want to do that either. <laughs> I've got all my setup here, you know. I can anyway. I'm not complaining. It just can be a little bit inconvenient at times, like just a few minutes ago. Brian says, Sean, have you tried selling your services as a consultant? Yeah, I mean that's the other thing to do. As if you've got graphic design skills. Um, or even you know WordPress and graphic design skills. You don't necessarily have to build um, the site yourself. 
you could um, be a consultant, which is what I do. I, other work that I do now is consultancy, um, mainly just for a couple of clients that I've worked with for a long time that I enjoy working with. Um, one of them's a fashion client and they give me lots of cheap clothes, which is good. <laughs> um, but yeah, and they're, they're reasonable size. So, you know, my client sizes, they, they're turning over millions a year. So you've got lots of you know stuff to get your teeth into. I, I like working with those clients. And, and what I do now, I mean, I don't build websites or anything like that. I wouldn't, as I was going back to my point earlier about WordPress and big sites that, you know, turn over lots of money. They have a bespoke e-commerce platform. But what I do is I am the consultant that holds their web designers accountable. There's a lot, a lot of cowboy web developers, designers, companies, out there, well, there is, especially in the UK, um, that basically are just robbing people and not delivering much. So as a consultant, um, you can be that person that's a bit impartial because you don't work for the client, but you can also be on the client side and um, you know hold those clients, uh, those companies to account when they're trying to you know sell something to your client. You can say you know that's right or that's wrong or what do you think you're doing. Or if they're designing something for your client, you can say, no, that's no good, or you need to do this. And just basically be that person that's on their case so that your client gets good value for money from them. I hope you're not hearing double anymore. I think that could just be because I had my uh, speaker on, on the laptop. Oh yeah, so sorry, I was talking about traffic, wasn't I? So the traffic on Bowertech is organic. Let me just um, have a look. Yeah, um, let me, where's the acquisition? Yeah, it's organic, but then it also gets quite a little bit from YouTube. Which always skewers my f skews skewers skews my figures a little bit. Um, let's have a look at another one. Boot boutique. That gets uh, audience. We were looking back in. Now again, boot boutique varies very much seasonally, so. Summer is not a good time for Boot Boutique, as you can imagine. So in the summer, it's getting about a thousand. But if I go back to, uh, let's say, January, January, it got two and a half thousand in the month. So that varies. And again, the majority is coming from, um, from organic search. And if I have a look at my commission back in January, we can see if it kind of tallies up. Uh, custom date range. January, oh, January. Boot Boutique. Yeah, it did like $150 in commission um, in January. Now, as you know, all of my affiliate sites are not that well maintained. I don't produce enough content. I don't do enough promotion on them, um, which is something I am changing because I am working quite a lot on uh, Bow Wow Tech now, which is a bit of an untested niche and all that kind of stuff, but you know, fingers crossed we'll get somewhere with it. Um, a better idea for what people are doing with their affiliate sites is to check out some of the success story videos, although I know I haven't done any recently, which, you know, maybe now's a good opportunity for me to reach out to you guys, and if you have had some success with any of your sites, I'd love to hear from you, and I'd love to be able to put a video together. I don't necessarily have to share your site, um, if you're scared of people taking your niche, that kind of thing. But yeah, it'd be good to put something together. And the other place to check is Doug Cunnington's channel. He's done lots of interviews with people um, that are earning um, good money on their affiliate sites. Abdul says, how many sites do you need to run to make a decent income? Do you have a separate business account for this? I'm doing uh, Amazon FBA and it's going well. This affiliate website is my second passive income idea. You only need one good site to earn some revenue. And in fact, a lot of the advice is that you should build up that one site, do lots of content, get it going, and before you move on, you don't need lots and lots of sites. If you're gonna be doing content ones, if you're gonna be doing WooCommerce type sites with WooZone, 
and maybe not add enough content then yeah maybe a few sites might be better because they tend to pick up a lot of the long tail searches with all the products um, but the commission they earn is, is not always as big as a, a purely content driven site. Uh, do you have a separate business account for this? I do have a separate business account and I do have a separate company uh, rather than putting it through all my personal stuff. You can put it all through your personal accounts but you'll need to obviously make sure you keep records of all the commission you've earned and expenses and that kind of stuff so that you can do a tax return at the end of the year. Although I'm not a tax accountant or advisor so you would need to get advice on that but I think it's easier if you run it all through a business account. It's just cleaner, you know? The original pharmacist says, ah, hello, mate. I don't know why I did a dodgy English accent. Now I've already got a dodgy English accent. Um, how do you get traffic to your sites? Content marketing, PPC. I get traffic to my sites with content marketing. Yeah, so adding good content um, to the site. Um, and also reaching out to other sites and also answering questions on things like Quora. Uh, and the other question and answer sites. And then SEO, kind of, and obviously doing a lot of SEO optimization as well, making sure that everything is optimized as well as it possibly can. Now, a little um, preview or sneak peek or whatever, I don't know what to call it, but uh, exciting news possibly is I'm in discussion with Income School, who I suggest you go check out. They've got a great YouTube channel. Um, and they're all about creating these sites and making money. And they're happy to share their sites and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I'm talking to them. Hopefully they may be joining me on one of my streams, uh, talking about getting traffic, making money, all that kind of stuff. So that's very exciting. So if you don't know who they are, do go check out their channel. Do a search on YouTube, uh, Income School. Two guys, I think it's Ricky and Jay. I need to remember their names if I get them on. But yeah, do check them out. And hopefully I'll get something um, arranged over the next few weeks. Michael is back. I don't know if you remember last week he was talking about SiteGround and that he had to pay them in order to, he wanted to cancel and leave them, but he had to pay them in order to move his site to a new host. And we were saying that's out of order and he's gone back to them and he's contacted the customer complaints and now they've renewed him at a discount and they've migrated another site free. So it's all good in the end. Yeah, don't take any crap from these companies. Tell them what's what. Phil says, be interested to see organic stats versus direct versus social, etc. Okay, let's, I've got Boot Boutique in front of me now, back in January, and it's got a reasonable amount of traffic, so let's have a look. Um, I can't actually share my screen on this computer, but basically, I can't even, I can't move that camera, but it's, it's connected. Um, but it's basically, uh, I could jump on the other one, I suppose. Yeah, let's, let's jump on the other one. Two seconds. Okay. Okay, I'll see if I can share my screen. Let me just uh, get up analytics. By the way, I uploaded a video today. Uh, did you see it? It was um, all around fixing insecure content errors, which is something you can get when you add an SSL um, certificate. So if for whatever reason, um, you're not getting the uh, the padlock on your site after you've added an SSL certificate, do check out that video. Right, so I was looking back at um, January. Okay, here we go. I'm sharing the screen. If I can figure it out. Okay. Oh, yeah, I think. Okay, I think we're there. Let's go. Ah, yeah, yeah. So here's the acquisition. This is, uh, I'm looking back at January on Boot Boutique because that was a busy time. So, um, I don't know if you can actually see this. Can you let me? 
I mean, ah, that's better. Um, so yeah, you can see organic search is the biggest driver of traffic, 65%. Direct is next, 20%. Social, after that, 9.84%. And I don't do any social on Boot Boutique, really. And the rest is referral. And of course, we can drill down and maybe get some more info on this. So we can see that on um, the SEO, it's it's these long tail type searches. I mean, look at that. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six words in it. If I do uh, do a search on that, let me see if I can find the site. Probably not. <laughs> I'll tell them all that. Uh, that was obviously back in January. I might not be ranking for this keyword anymore. Oh no, there we go. We have got page two for that. And that is a um, a WooZone product that's ranking there. Yeah. So yeah, organic search is doing really well on the long tail. There's loads of pages. Um, The thing is you don't get a lot of keyword information in analytics anymore it might be better to look in webmaster console because a lot of the traffic is just put next to not provided so not very useful let's go source medium get some more detail so yeah there is a bit from youtube as you'd expect i've got some from bing from wp eagle again as you'd expect i don't know what these are but yeah there we go there's some traffic stuff Hope that's useful. So interestingly, just while I've got the screen up, um, Google have changed the little padlock now. It's not green or or yellow or whatever. It's just kind of there or it's not there if you if you got a, a mixed content connection. So yeah, update your browser if you want to see that. And we're back. Uh, hi, Miss Messy Wessy. Thank you for the compliment. Good to have you on. Uh, Scott Halford says, what is your best ranking long tail keyword? I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. The best ranking site is um, beer shirts, which ranks number one for beer shirts, if that is a keyword, and beer t-shirts and all those kind of um, related things. It ranks number one for all those keywords, so that's good. Does anyone use them? I don't know. Uh, let's have a look. What are we getting any numbers? Yeah, I mean, I let's talk about keywords for a minute. I don't know if I trust. The numbers that you you often get from these keyword tools so did i look at beer shirts on the analytics let me just bring it up we can see if it marries up so keyword keg is saying that for the search term beer shirts on a uk search there's 570 a month which is actually quite good you'd think that's that's a reasonable amount of people and my um my site is number one organically there is a, another one that's running um running google adwords called wear your beer which i've not seen before they take my idea now they're selling like branded beer shirts which is something i'm not doing so i don't even know if you can get them on amazon but maybe i need to add some more products to the site like a corona shirt or something like that oh yeah you can Okay, so I need to add some more shirts on that one. But yeah, interestingly, I'm ranking number one for beer t-shirts. It says there's 570 a month, but then if I look if I'm getting any traffic from that. I don't know. Brewery t-shirts is coming up. I don't really get the keyword information. Probably need to dive into where master tools, as I said. But anyway, yeah, my point is I think you need to take some of the numbers that you get with these keyword tools with a pinch of salt, which kind of then throws the keyword golden ratio up in the air a little bit, because if the numbers you're putting in aren't right, then the information you're getting out won't be right. Remember the old phrase, garbage in, garbage out? It kind of is that. If 
Phil says that he, when he sells um, websites and WordPress, that kind of stuff, he runs a leasing model where I, I, he has people tied in for a monthly fee with no design fees. That's another way of doing it. Ian says he has been a chef for like 20 years and he's never touched building a website, but he's now currently working on his second site and it's all learned from my videos and from trial and error. That really is the best way to learn WordPress. I mean, WordPress has changed a lot over the years, but it's a really friendly piece of software. I mean, obviously there are a few little techie bits. Um, I mean, back in the day you had to install it by uploading files with FTP and stuff, but now you've got the one click installation, so that really helps. But you know you can play around with it, and you can't really mess it up too much. Um, so you can play around with plugins and themes, and, and you can create something really good just by messing around with it. And you know you do that enough times, you become confident, and then you'll be able to go and do it for other people. Chris Wildfire, hello, hello, best tech reviews, and hello, Madhu. I think I've already said Madhu. Request to keep the mic near to me. I will try. Chris Walford says, uh, do you have any tips on creating an awesome about page? Well, personally, I think the best about pages are just open and honest and give a clear reflection about whatever the website's about. So, you know, if it's about a company, you wanna be uh, have lots of images, lots of nice images, maybe even a video showing off your staff, your premises, um, and other bits to do with your company, just, you know, be open. And you just put as much information and being as open as you can. I hate about pages that are really short and you know don't really tell you much about them. I think just as much detail as you can, include pictures and images and, and you'll be fine. Firma said, do you get into any insurance cover in case a client tried to sue you? I did at a say at one point have it, but I don't have it anymore. And maybe you should have it, maybe you shouldn't, I don't know. I've never been sued. And I have messed up a few times. <laughs> Phil Lancaster, good to see you. Alex, have you dabbled in Formidable Pro? Mm. No. I use it to build a simpler front end for the client to edit and modify their own site. Also has a fit program as well as if I remember rightly. No, it's not something I've really used. Let me just Google it. <laughs> Remind myself. It just does forms really, doesn't it? Mm. See, I'm always using um, Gravity Forms. Or the other one that I recommended before, was it Happy Forms? Yeah. I like, I like those two. But things like Elementor and um, you know, Visual Composer are a great way of giving clients access to their site so they can break it. <laughs> Personally, I don't like giving clients too much access to the site. I mean, it's very well you show them and whatever. I mean, let them add a blog post or whatever. But that's again something that you can charge for, um, you know, adding content and that kind of stuff. If, you know, if you're gonna have, you can have different support package tiers. So you can have like a basic support package where you just do the, the updates and, and keep the site up and running nicely. But you could have a more, um, you know, platinum package or gold standard package where you help them with content. So if they've got a blog post or they want changes doing to a page, you'll just do that anyway and have it included as part of the package. Just a form. Terry British says, "Hi Alex, I finally made free qualifying sales on Amazon. Yay! This is my second attempt to get full associate acceptance. Just wanted to say, if people are finding it hard, don't give up. Well done." That's good. See, when I first started doing Amazon affiliate, it was easy. It was easy to get approved by Amazon. You just signed up and they approved you and you got access to the API and happy days you created your site and you started earning commission. Now it's not so easy and I'm getting a lot of messages from people that are struggling to get approved by Amazon or they're struggling to get access to the API. So well done, that is a real achievement. Um, but as you say, if people are struggling with it, keep going. Don't give up. I had an email from someone yesterday. I thought their site was fantastic. 
it was an affiliate site. It was, I think, made with Kingdom or, or something similar. Um, but it was full of rich content. It had loads of products. It was in a good niche. It just looked really good. And it was delivering value. It had good, to say, good content. But Amazon had rejected him, and I just couldn't figure out why. So I just said, you know, make a few tweaks. One thing he didn't have, he didn't have a disclaimer or disclosure at the bottom of the site in the footer, which I think is very important nowadays. Just clearly saying that you're an Amazon affiliate and, and that stuff. If you want the, the blurb, go check out Bowwell Tech, uh, Bowwell Tech, uh, Bowwell Tech, <laughs> and copy it from the footer on there. Best tech reviews. Uh, I'm not quite sure you, what you're talking about. How do you then? I think you're talking to Helen or something. It's confusing. Um, Sean says uh, he's talking to Brian. I'm not going to read out all of your chat messages. If you uh, want to read them, then just check out the chat. Ah, uh, you get you're getting a lot of clicks, but no sales. Hmm. Depends how you're measuring your clicks. Do check in Amazon to make sure that you're getting clicks and they're being registered um, in Amazon. I think Amazon does show you the clicks, doesn't it? I've not looked for a little while. Let me just double check. The one thing you do want to be careful of is that if you're using WooZone or WZone is that the... Um... Oh no, yeah, you do get clicks, don't you? So yeah, do double check that you're getting clicks registered over in your Amazon uh, dashboard. Um, but yeah, and the WooZone, what was I saying? The WooZone, I'm getting distracted, I'm reading things. The WooZone numbers that you see in the WooZone dashboard, they're not often uh, correct. Hello, Rohit. Hello, um, Abdullah. Oh, Ab. Rohit says, what's your monthly visitors in beer shirts? I'll tell you, hang on. Should we have a look at August? Is that, I told you it's a funny month, but let's have a look. So it's um, 700 sessions, 590 users, which, you know, as I said, looking at those keyword numbers, they were quite high, they were a lot higher than that, and I'm getting page one rankings, and the traffic's still not coming. I'm going to add some more products and some more content. See if I can get some more. But yeah, that's not a huge amount. And if we look at the commission on that, I made $10. To be fair, it has a good conversion rate of 6%, which I think is pretty cool for Amazon. So 134 clicks through to Amazon, nine ordered items. But they're just beer t-shirts, they're not a lot of money, are they? <laughs> it was a bit of fun, a bit of fun. I had the domain name, that's why I built that site. I didn't do any niche research or anything. Carl, is Carl on? Yeah, Carl, are you still on? Do you want to tell us how your site's going? Because I know your site is good. I don't see him in the chat, so I don't know if he's on, 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 on. Hi, Mr. S. I, you know, Stephanie says, I have a good website, but it's because of the dogs I raise. I'm almost afraid of ruining it by taking the plunge into affiliate marketing alongside of it. Um, I, I just do it subtly, you know, you can always recommend products, especially products that you use yourself, that's fine, as a start. Or keep it separate, as Helen suggests. Uh, Sassy says, how many plugins are too many in your opinion? I see so many bloggers recommending 10 plus must have plugins. 10 is fine. You should be fine with 10. In fact, I don't think I've got many sites that have less than 10. When I started having problems, going back to my story earlier where I had that client that wanted you know everything on their website, all the bells and all the whistles, that got up to like 50 plugins and some of them were quite big plugins. Like, you know, event management, timetables, um, galleries, 
I can't even think what they all were, but there was tons of stuff they wanted to do. And yeah, 50 was too many. It was just grinding to a halt. It really depends on the on what you want to do. I think as a good rule of thumb, you don't want to install too many and you want to avoid plugins if you can, if you can do it another way, maybe by adding a theme, whatever, um, that has some functionality built into it, that could be the way, but yeah. If you need a plugin, you need a plugin at the end of the day. Talking of plugins, I may be releasing a plugin soon in conjunction with a developer that I work with. It's kind of an interesting situation I've got with them because I needed um, some work doing for a client. I was doing a website, uh, which is another tip actually when it comes to um, being a WordPress developer and making money with, with WordPress. In fact, I don't like to call myself a WordPress developer because I'm I'm not like a big coder sort of thing. I don't develop. I like to call myself a WordPress putter together or fixer upper or plug things together <laughs> kind of WordPress person. But yeah, my tip is that you should have a good developer up your sleeve that you need. Uh, that you have when you need them. So I have a guy that I actually met over on the Warrior Forum. I don't know if you've ever been over to the Warrior Forum. Uh, it was big back in the day. I've not been over there recently. But it's all around internet marketing and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, I met the guy over there. He's called Johnny. He's over in Ireland, across the water from here. Never met him. But he did a few little bits of work for me. And now he's always there if I need him. I have him in my email. I have him on Google Chat. So when I'm doing a client project and they say, you know, can you do this, do that? And it's like a little bit beyond what I would normally do. I mean, of course, yeah, I could hack around with it and probably figure most stuff out myself, but it might take a few hours. Um, for those little bits and bobs, I just send an email to John or a chat message and, and he does it. And he's, you know, very reasonably priced. Um, but yeah, the reason I mentioned John is because I asked him to do some work for a client and he came up with a plugin, really cool plugin that, um, if you're having like a, a site with lots of videos, which I do, obviously WP Eagle, but also the client site that I was working on, it's a little plugin that allows you to put a little kind of watched badge over the video. So when someone watches the video, whether it be YouTube or self-hosted or whatever, it just adds a little watched thing so they know which videos they've watched. I thought it was really cool. There was nothing that, out there doing it. So, um, yeah, I, I dropped him an email the other day and he said, yeah, I've been working on it for a little while now. I'm going to release it as a plugin. But it was my idea and I paid him to make it for me, sort of. But uh, it's a grey area, I guess. But hopefully we're going to work together. He's going to publish it. We'll have both our name on it. I'll help promote it. He helps develop it. Happy days. <laughs> anyway, Hi Hi says, my top three affiliate YouTubers are Income School, which as I mentioned earlier, hopefully I'm going to get them to work with me on something, maybe on the live stream, maybe another video. Doug is your second and I'm third. Oh, you say not in that order. I'm sure that is the, probably the best order. <laughs> Stephanie says, I thought about uh, that. We're talking about setting up another site. Um, so I'm slowly blogging, which may be a safe route. Yeah, good idea. Peter, hello. Bit late to the party, but we'll catch up later. That's fine, Peter. Yeah, of course, you can all watch this stream when I finish, which will probably be in about five, 10 minutes. You can start it from the beginning. There's a little bit where the baby's crying, you want to skip that bit. Uh, Peter says, anyone in Cheshire? Lovely part of the world. Brian, who is a proud owner of a WP Eagle t-shirt, which are available, the link down there. I want to see you order one though. <laughs> Brian says, plugins, uh, are they affecting your site speed? And if yes, have any experience, what are your recommendations? Yeah, every plugin does affect your site speed because every plugin basically injects more code into your WordPress site, so all that code has to be executed and executing code takes time. Now, some plugins are slower than others. And in fact, there is a plugin called Plugin Performance Profiler. That's off the top of my head. It's something like that. If you do a search for um, WordPress Plugin Performance Plugin, you'll find something and you can install that into your site and it will basically check through all of the plugins that you run in and let you know which ones are slow and which ones are fast and all that. So you then make a judgment whether you want to keep them or not. It really depends on the size of the plugin. You know, plugins like WooCommerce, um, they can slow your site down because they've got a lot of stuff going on, especially if you add lots of products. Plugins like WooZone can also do that if you've got lots of products. And the kind of only solution then is to upgrade your hosting. Um, but generally, if they're not, you know, if you have got too many products and you're just doing small stuff, they're fine. Other plugins that I found can slow your site down are things like broken link checkers. 
Um, so these are plugins that you can install and it will go through your site and let you know if you've got any broken links. The problem with them is that they're constantly kind of scanning your site and that's using the server resources and it's slowing everything down. But there are some videos on my channel all about speeding up your site because um, there are some plugins that will make your site go faster, like WP Fastest Cache, for example. Uh, Helen's up in Cheshire, up near Warrington. Rohit says, what are the pros and cons of taking a keyword as a domain name? The pros are that there could be some SEO benefit, although nowadays it seems to be negligible. You know, back in 2000, and that kind of time, if you got the domain name with the keywords, then you were pretty much guaranteed to rank for that keyword. But nowadays it doesn't seem to have much of an effect. So, I mean, there is still a chance. I mean, there's probably a good reason why beer shirts um, is ranking quite well for beer related stuff is because the domain name has beer in it. So I think that whatever people say, I think there is a little bit of benefit possibly in having keywords in it. The disadvantage to it is they don't always read that nicely, they don't always look that nice. Um, they're not very good if you wanna build a brand. Um, so, you know, my other site, Boot Boutique, it's kind of got a bit of both. It's got a little bit of keyword boot, uh, but then it's got the boutique, so it's kind of a bit of a brand as well. So that's a bit of a combination of the two. But I think my advice is I wouldn't worry too much about getting keywords in the domain name. If you found a domain name that you like, then just go for that. Uh, Ian says, another confusing question. Well, that's good, that's just what I like. <laughs> If my AWS key was for Amazon UK, could there still be a risk of me losing commissions if I had Amazon.com products? Um, when it comes to commission, it, it, it's actually down to your um, Amazon tracking IDs. And of course, whether you're signed up for Amazon.com or Amazon.co.uk as an affiliate. Now, if you got American products on there and people go to the American site and buy from the American site and you're not signed up as an American associate then you're not going to get commission um, so yeah it basically comes down to that it depends it comes down to what IDs have you got if you signed up for amazon.com and amazon.co.uk and you've got tracking IDs for both of them put them in your woo zone and you'll be fine because then regardless of where they buy you will still get commission um, if you're just generating links maybe using site stripe then you're gonna need to add two links one to US one to UK but I guess my point is that the keys, I don't think have any bearing on that. The keys are just to access the API. They're not country specific. The commissions is down to your tracking ID and that is country specific. I think Best Tech Reviews has kind of said that as well. Hi Daniel. Hi, I will have, Daniel asked me if I can look at his site. I will do, it's probably best to do that on email. If you share your site in here, someone will will probably take it. Tunes mashup. Hi, it's 1.13 a.m. here. Wow, where are you? You must be that way somewhere. My whole family's sleeping, but I'm awake completing my computer project. I'm very sleepy, I don't know, maybe I should complete it or sleep. If you can still work and it's good work, then carry on. If you're too tired to do good work, stop, get some rest, do it in the morning. Hi Anthony, you are a little bit late, sorry. So next week, I need to talk, tell you about next week, because I'm gonna go in a minute. Um, next week I'm not gonna be able to stream on Wednesday. So, I thought maybe I could do it on Thursday. Um, which is a possibility, but I'm also open to ideas and times and days. So if you just want to quickly in the chat now, let me know when is a good time for you, um, for me to stream. It might be an afternoon, it might be in the morning, and obviously you need to let me know what time zone you're in as well so I can figure out what time I need to be on. But yeah, I can't do Wednesday because I've been asked to speak locally, oh God, at an event just up the road, a networking event. Um, so that's gonna be interesting. I've not done any speaking events for quite some time. Uh, it's only 20 minutes, half an hour. I'm sure I'll be fine. I'm going to talk, be talking about video and about giving your knowledge away for free, which is something I do quite a lot, and why that's a good thing to do. 
it will come together. I need to fire up Keynote and put some slides together, I think. But yeah, please let me know when you would like me to do this, this stream next week. And you know, I'll see what the majority of you are saying and we'll, we'll try and plan it around that. Sean says, hi, it's me again. I've been designing WordPress sites with Divi. Is there something better in your opinion? Uh, Divi's really good. In my opinion, I like Divi. Um, better, I don't know, but equivalent and possibly better, depends what you like, um, is X-Theme. There's a bit of, bit, of, bit of smudge on that. Yeah, there's X-Theme, which comes with a cornerstone page builder, which is really good. There is any theme that uses Elementor, so Ocean WP or Rife, which is a, a theme that I used in a previous video tutorial. Um, but yeah, a lot of people use Divi and it's really good. I've used it once. I can't remember what side it was I built now. And I got on fine with Divi. Um, so if you like it, then stick with it. Abdul says, I don't want to make another business account and name if this flops. Okay. Okay, so what in terms of setting up a business and a, a business uh, account and a company and all that kind of stuff, my advice would be just to have something generic and then you can always use trading as it's called over here. I don't know what it'd be called in other countries. But here, so you can have a company name trading as another name. So my company is actually called Alex Digital, um, which I use for all of my trading stuff. But obviously I've got different names like WP Eagle and, and whatever else I'm doing, you can do. It doesn't really matter on the name. So just go for something generic and that's fine. Scott says, and this is um, inspirational and it gives us all optimism. He asked Amazon for the API and they gave it to him straight away. He didn't have any sales and he made sure the disclosure was on his site everywhere. So that's the tip. Make sure you've got disclosure very clear and on every page. And then just ask Amazon nicely. Anthony says, have you heard back from WooZone about their plugin bugs? Um, I've heard back on a couple of things. I can't remember the exact bugs we were talking about now. Um, first thing is their support site is back up. I mean, last week we were looking and it had gone down and we were all getting a little bit worried. The second thing I will say is that the developer that I had direct communication with on email hasn't replied to my recent emails. <laughs> it's a bit worrying. On the plus side, I have raised some tickets. I raised a couple of tickets today on a couple of issues and they did come back to me really quickly via the support website, so that's a good thing. Um, I did ask them about the, um, the Chrome extension and what happens when you import products using the Chrome extension and do they synchronize prices? The answer is they don't. Which is not great really because you want to have accurate pricing on your site. Um, I mean, that's why you need access to the API and that's why asking them really nicely and making sure you've got disclosure on your site is probably the best thing to do. And the only other thing that you could do is, you know, import uh, products manually, then every week or two weeks is update them manually with the price. You need the API in order to synchronize. So yeah, I've got an answer on that, but was there something specific, Anthony? Remind me. Hi, R7, good to see you. We had a good chat last week. I really enjoyed that. And she says, once you've been accepted into the Amazon affiliate program, if you don't make any future sales, but still continue to get a lot of clicks, will Amazon remove you from their program? Maybe, but it's a bit weird if you're getting a lot of clicks and no sales. And it's going to, they're gonna give you at least um, 180 days, something like that, which is, you know, loads, half a year, isn't it? About six months. So you should be fine. I've, I've never had that happen to me. Yeah, and Scott says, I've heard that if you have no sales in 90 days, they remove you, which is a possibility, but generally they give you more than 90 days and the benefit of doubt. I mean, if you're getting lots of traffic, they might give you the benefit of doubt. It's not a kind of black and white rule. Ian says, is there another way to see clicks? I get a lot of traffic, but Amazon is showing no clicks. That's slightly concerning. 
in your analytics, depending on how you're tracking, you may be able to have a report on outbound link clicks, so you could check that. If you go into your Amazon account, you should definitely be able to see clicks. So I'm just looking now, all of my tracking IDs are all showing clicks. Even ones like Rapid Weight Loss Tools, which gets no um, no traffic really at all. It's still showing 24 clicks for last month. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap it up in a minute because my throat is starting to go a bit. I've been talking too much. So I'm gonna go through these last few questions in the chat, and then I'm gonna uh, wish you all goodbye. I think we both sleep, but I've just heard my wife come out, so she's been with the baby for like an hour trying to get this late. Which is, yeah, not a great way to spend an evening. WordPress implementer, that's what it is. That's what we should call ourselves. Professional WordPress implementer, expert, consultant, guy. That's what you want on your business card. And she says, can you use Facebook and other social media platforms to promote your WooZone product? And once they purchase it, will Amazon see that it came from Facebook or another place? No, I don't think Amazon will be able to see that. Although they do see a lot. Why do you think they're putting all those Alexas in everyone's house? Hmm. Hey, Marty's on. <laughs> and he's clarifying it's called P3 Performance Profiler Plugin, the one that you want to use to find out which plugins are running slow. By the way, did you see Marty's uh, video that he kindly sent to me? Um, it's a couple of weeks back now. He did it just before I went to Spain, which was very convenient because I didn't have any content while I was away. It was all about um, securing your uh, WordPress website. Go check it out, find it on the channel, and also do check out his channel, Let's Be WP. In fact, Marty's another reason why I carried on doing WP Eagle. I had a chat with him when I had a small channel and he had a bigger channel than me um, I, I've overtaken him a little bit now but uh, yeah he kind of inspired me we had a good chat and, and made me want to do it even more which I did um, but he's been taking a little break and now he's back and, and doing some really cool stuff so do check him out maybe he'll come and join me on the stream one day And he says, can I have a site with 200 plugins, but all of them active, and will it still slow down my site? I do believe that deactivated plugins can have an effect. Sam says, just join, what's the stream about? Oh, it's about all sorts, it's about WordPress, it's about making money online, and all that kind of things, but it's about to end, you've missed it. Thurman says, one of my WooZone sites is making a few small sales and has traffic, but I messed up when I started it. I deselected the row images and I'm trying to figure out what to do. I think if you just turn them on and then sync all the products, it will fix it. If not, you're gonna have to re-import the products, which is a pain. Peter Rowe says, is there any validity in 90 day A's on cookies? Yeah, that is a thing. It does does work. Although I believe it's only, the cookie is only effective on the stuff that was added to the cart. I need to clarify that. Okay, so just to continue what the firm says, I was thinking of exporting the product ASINs to a CSV, then deleting all products and images, and then importing them again via WooZone with remote on. Um, do you think this will cause any issues, slug duplicates or SEO? I don't think it will. I think a lot of, if they're the same products, you obviously need to make sure that you delete all the old products and make sure they're removed from your bin or your trash, whatever it's called in WordPress. Then you should be able to import and the URLs should all be the same, so therefore you shouldn't lose any rank or any traffic. But I think it's worth doing because if Amazon catch that you're not using remote images, they give you a slap on the wrist. Helen says that Thursday after 8 p.m. is good for her. Any time in the after e noon evening after 4 p.m. is good for Ian. Um, any day of the week for Ian. Furman says any day after six. Furman says I hate Divi. I found it sluggish and not very nice to use. I prefer Ocean, Generate Press, Astra or Astral with Elementor. Just another quick note on, oh, you didn't say uh, Genesis Press, whatever it's called, Genesis Framework, by Studio Press. Have you heard of that? I just wanted to let you guys know that uh, WP Engine, I think, have bought Studio Press, and now, they're now offering all of their themes when you take out hosting. A lot of people swear by their themes. I've never really liked them, but hey. Mark, 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 Mark even. Mark says, any evening after 7 p.m. UK as a work full time is good. Sean says, are there f are they free themes? 
the Furman. Um, yeah, there's a good, free th a good few free themes that use Elementor. I don't know if Astro is one. Ocean WP with Elementor is free. And Rife theme, which I liked a lot in my recent video on how to make a website, is also free. They do have a pro version. ENS says the P3 performance profile was the last updated three years ago and that's 130 bad reviews. Okay, so that maybe is not the best way to test your site speed. I mean, you could be really, um, well, you could, you could go through a really laborious process of kind of just turning plugins on and off and then running your site through Google site speed or something. That could be a way of doing it, It'd take a long time. Scott's gotta to go to the pub. I'll see you down there, Scott. <laughs> see you later. Okay. Applejack says, can I do an updated video on rehub and content? Yes, I will do. And Marty says that he's, uh, he said that there, there was some problem with it maybe for a little while, the P3 plugin profiler thing, but it should be good now. But and it has, also as he says, that's the only plugin that really does that stuff. So anyway, yeah, I will let you guys know when I'm gonna stream next week. In order to keep up to date um, with what I'm doing, you need to join my email list. Now I only send out an email once a week, maximum. And generally it's around when I'm gonna stream. So if you wanna be one of the first to know, straight to your inbox, head over to wpeagle.com and join the mailing list. It's called like the WP Eagle Inner Circle or something like that. If you scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, you'll see a box pop up or at the bottom of any of the posts, there is a form pop your name and email in there and then you'll be sure to get my newsletters and stuff like that and you'll know when I'm streaming next week, which will be cool. If you're not already subscribed, that's another way of doing it. Subscribe, click the bell and you'll get a notification, hopefully, when I go live and when I upload new videos. And the last thing I would like to say is if you did enjoy tonight's stream, even with the baby crying and all that stuff, it wasn't as bad as that baby one I did a while back. Do you remember that one? That was when the, my wife was out and I was trying to do a stream and the baby was crying and I brought her in on the stream, it was a nightmare. You remember that one? You can find it back on the channel. But anyway, yeah, if you did enjoy tonight's stream, um, please do click the like button. I can see that it's currently up to 18 likes. Before I go, can we get that up to 25 likes? You think we could do that? It just needs another, I don't know, seven likes. Go on, click it right now, let's see what happens. But other than that, Um, I'm off. So yeah, Ian, to join, sign up for the newsletter, go to wpeagle.com, of course. And you'll if you scroll down, you'll see the form there. We're up to 21 likes. Am I gonna have to sit here till we get to 25 likes? I could be here a while. <laughs> 22, that's fine. I'm happy with 22. Yeah, we're not gonna go up anymore. So yeah, thanks very much for joining me and I'll see you next week. I'll let you know what time um, via Twitter. And of course, do check me out on Twitter. You can find WP Eagle over on Twitter and on Facebook. Do like and follow and all that stuff and you'll be kept up to date. <laughs> that is the problem, Anthony. Yeah, we all have two thumbs, but on YouTube, just one. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Good luck with all your projects and have a good week and a weekend and, and all that stuff. Till next time, bye for now. <laughs>